Hello and welcome to the Pride of India show. Our guest today is Meghna Ghaipuri, President of Whistling Woods International. Meghna could have easily followed her filmmaker father Subhash Gay's footsteps, but she chose, a, chose to take a different path. She helps youngsters to take sure a step into the world of filmmaking, acting, fashion, media, and many more things. Welcome to the show, Meghna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Meghna, please take us through the initial journey of Whistling Woods. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Kanchan, for this um, uh, for this introduction, and thank you, uh, Exchange for Media, for uh, you know having me on this uh, on this platform. Um, I am uh, actually truly humbled and blessed to be to be here today because it, uh, like you said earlier, that it was a choice that I made. It actually wasn't. Uh, it was something that um, my father dreamed of, you know, and he dreamed of this many years ago when he was struggling as an actor uh, when he came to Mumbai after finishing his own acting education and realized that there was no opportunity opportunities for somebody who didn't have connections in the industry. Um, and it was a promise he made to himself back then, uh, you know, over five decades ago that uh, he would, if when ever he finds success in life and when he, when he has enough money, he will give back by actually creating a platform where where youngsters who are talented come together and help each other find a way in the industry. So it started really from that thought. And uh, over the years, of course, uh, you know, he um, continued to make films and he continued to produce, direct, write, and uh, became one of the finest filmmakers in the country. And, uh, you know, but he didn't forget the promise he made to himself. And so it was around the time that he had um, made Tal, uh, he decided to launch an IPO for the company, uh, which is Mukta Arts, and uh, you know, told the shareholders up front that I would like to dedicate or or take some of this these funds and put it towards the Film Institute. Um, and I think that that was really the start of my own journey because I was in I was in the UK studying there and then working for some time. When my father said that, you remember, I used to always talk to you about you know that that I want to build a film school, and I used to say yes, yeah, I know, I remember you doing you know you do talking about it a lot, uh, but I didn't think it would be a reality because he. He's such a filmmaker at heart that uh, it can't you can't take him away from filmmaking and the creative process for very long and he said that's why I want you to come back and I want you to um, really look into the operations look into the you know the entire institute uh, so uh, you know to be honest I wasn't even sure back then I was very young and I, I didn't know if I could add any value uh, but uh, I knew how much it meant to my father uh, I knew how much he how much the industry meant to him how much this country means to him uh, I know how much giving back to youngsters means to him uh, which is why I thought okay you know what I must I must do this as as my you know kind of a way of paying my gratitude to my to my parents and so I came back and uh, and that's how the journey of this thing was started um, it was a long journey before we could even get to the you know, to the building that you see as today the campus. Um, and, uh, but it was, I, I must say that was something that uh, has really added so much fulfillment in my own life because I got to, I got to learn so many things at such a young age, uh, you know, whether it was from architecture to landscaping to, you know, to uh, technology to uh, legal uh, things and business and marketing and de business development. I think all sorts of things you know, you get to do when you are part of a startup and a startup such as this, which is so unique. Uh, so yeah, so that is, uh, that is what my journey really has been with it. So nice to know that we are fulfilling your father's dream and how nicely you are doing it. <sighs> Thank so you. What, what were your major challenges in the beginning? As you said, Kay, you were not sure you were very young, right? Mm -hmm. What challenges you faced in the beginning? So one of the biggest challenges was there was no institute like that in India. Yeah, the one that we had planned. Of course, there was FTI, there was SRFTI, they were government-run institutions, uh, and they were very reputed. But what we wanted to do was very different. We wanted to really be a uh, be an institute which was for the industry, by the industry, in the industry, you know, and, and really catering to the industry needs and uh, to make it really, really practical, the course. So in fact, you know, when we researched and we went to various institutes abroad as well, we found that there were no institutes who were uh, really being able to fill that gap between the industry and 
students very few you know some some in la a couple in new york but generally uh, institutes or film institutes or art institutes tend to be secluded from the real world yeah there were very few that had actually connected with film companies and were making sure that the students were learning on while they were studying uh, or, or or doing jobs and training while they are studying so uh, so we wanted that right balance in our institute you know my father being a commercial filmmaker understood uh, that he you know he, he and the struggles that he went through as a filmmaker to really you know be able to uh, sustain himself and the family and the company that he understood the the importance of business and commercials in an, in an, in a filmmaking process or a creative process as well as he understood the artistic side of it so the whole um, pedagogy of the institute was to bring together you know these three main st streams which is art technology and business um and i think that uh, the biggest challenge at that point was to find faculty how would you find a faculty that would actually understand this vision understand how to uh, execute this vision uh, plus in in our industry uh, because there were no other institutes many institutes um you know the two institutes had brought out very few people who were already working in the industry they were not teachers they were not trained teachers so the the journey and the, the challenge was to bring the right team together because we could have built and we did end up building this beautiful campus but it would be nothing if we didn't have good teachers with us um and i think that is where my uh, challenge was and that is where actually i think my biggest achievement if i if i don't say it myself has been that you know i was able to create really beautiful bonds with people you know the the one to one connection that i had with each person who contributed to us thing was whether it was through curriculum whether it was through teaching whether you know so i think and and that continues today those bonds are really strong even today and i think that has made me a, a, a you know a richer person so like they say challenges are the ones that actually make you stronger so i definitely feel that was the first challenge that we faced to find good faculty um there were of course financial challenges we were not a uh, uh government funded institute we were not funded by anything you know we, our parent company was supporting us so we needed to get back on our feet very very fast we had already spent a lot on the campus and technology on the campus uh but finding students at that point way back in 2006 was a challenge so we built this huge campus for 1200 students and our first batch was 75 students so you can imagine and that continued for many years for 5 to 7 years we were like very very short of students because at that point um to children or parents did not believe that you know you needed to get educated in in the creative arts to make it in the film industry or the media industry so it was first of all you know educating them that you know it is really really important for them to understand the craft for them to understand the skills you know half their journey will be or their foundation will be so solid that you know they'll be able to complete their journey with more success uh, and chances of success if they are educated so so yeah so these kind of challenges in terms of students quality students faculty quality faculty we brought in a lot of people from out of the, out of india to kind of you know uh, work with us for some time uh, and then we started of course ourselves uh, becoming more and more efficient with the way we wanted to run the school which year you managed to fill uh, the entire 1200 seats uh that was i think uh, later 2015 okay. so how has the film media and fashion training evolved over the last 15 years since since you were handling this institute uh you know so this industry like many people find it um you know the glamour industry and they find that you know this industry is, uh, looks like so much fun right but it is actually a lot of um, you know uh, a lot of work a lot of hard work a lot of persistence because it's a very dynamic industry um as creative people emerge audiences also emerge and change and and you know form their own opinions so the industry has to continuously keep changing whether it's storytelling whether it's the way you tell stories whether how you're performing uh, for for a film you know uh, and we ourselves seen how the content in our country has changed so much over the past uh 20 30 years right so um i feel like um that i think that aspect is something that we really need to understand about this industry that is a, it's an extremely dynamic industry right so uh, things keep changing and we have to understand that uh fashion film um creative arts media uh entertainment these are areas that we are dealing with so our responsibility um as an institute is to always be ahead of the times always be um thinking what is it going to be 10 years from now you know so this thing was already about 
four years ago ventured into VR uh, filmmaking, right? Which was not even being talked about otherwise uh, in India or even in the world. It was something that they were experimenting with, but we got into it very quickly and we started training our students in it. So I think that uh, the industry is always changing. Uh, what are the changes is a very difficult question because there are so many, but um, what we must understand is that we must keep changing with the changing times, whether, you, whether you're a creator, whether you're an educational institute, whether you're a student, uh, we need to all keep that in mind. Has COVID made it tough to, to function? Sorry? Has COVID, has COVID pandemic made it tough to function? Yes. Or they had changed yes. your approach, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it has been a difficult time for everybody. And I think uh, uh, kudos to our faculty and our academics team who really shifted from gear from, you know, suddenly going online. Uh, and I think we did a really good job of bringing everything online, taking the curriculum online and something like our course, which is so practical. You know, uh, our fashion students, in fact, completed their complete fashion uh, line uh, at the end of two years and presented beautiful garments and all, all of that was done remotely. So I feel like, um, you know, the, the challenges of the pandemic also taught us how to work in chaos. I think these students are really fortunate, to be honest, because tomorrow there will be many other challenges in their lives but they would have gone through this 2020, 21 phase and they would have known how to deal with those challenges much better uh, than if they hadn't gone through it. Um, having said that, we are extremely glad, very, very happy to have our students back on campus, to have our classes resume because I think that personal, uh, you know, especially in a course like that, especially the way we've run Whistling Woods is all about one-on-one -on -one mentorship. It's all about taking care of each student uh, as an individual. And I think that only works when you're actually be able to talk to them in person and be with them and see their work in person. Mm -hmm. So now the pandemic has declined. Do you have any plans for expansion? Um, so, you know, expansion is something that everybody keeps asking me about, but I feel like um, uh, Whistling Woods is... Um, main goal has always been quality you know so the idea is to always always work towards quality and i feel like if you spread yourself too thin you may lose out on that quality like i said earlier there are uh, the industry um, you know needs people here in mumbai uh, the faculty is here in mumbai so uh, you know we are working on um, new programs for example last year we launched a school of events uh, this year we've launched a school of uh, sports and uh, um, esports uh, you know, so we are constantly introducing new programs into the Institute so that we can grow in terms of giving students the opportunity to do what they love, right? Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that there are so many streams that, that today's child, today's youngster wants to get into, but they don't know where to go or how to go about it. And I think the thing was can be that one platform when it comes to the creative arts and entertainment and media, uh, we can be the provider for quality education in those fields. So yes, yeah, slowly and steadily, we are expanding. Uh, you know, we used to be only a film school. Then we started the media and communication school fashion school, music, uh, we are the first music composition production course program in, in India. Um, you know, we, we are offering degrees now uh, for all our courses, which again is something um, that uh, many of the other institutes weren't able to do. So um, that has also helped us get better students because parents then are more willing to send their students, uh, their children to, to, the, to a film school or a media school. Uh, so I think, yeah, so I think that uh, growing within our campus is something that we've been focusing on. Uh, another thing that we are really, really focusing on is Virtual Academy, which is our online platform for, uh, for teaching uh, our courses online. So it's something that we've done very successfully with our film program. We have a wonderful one-year program that we are running on that. We have students doing it. Uh, and uh, some of them have done really well after doing that program, which is, which is excellent. Uh, I think that gives flexibility to a lot of professionals out there who uh, got stuck doing chemical engineering or, you know, uh, something of not, which is not of their choice, uh, but then, um, you know, have this option of virtually learning how to become filmmakers. So, mm -hmm. so that is something that we are really looking forward to expand all over the country because that's virtual. Uh, in fact, all over the world. So do you have any plans to start uh, an institute in Uttar Pradesh because the government over there, they, they, they want to start a film industry in Noida, I guess. Yes, yes, that's right. I mean, the, the whole, uh, idea is that you know we we will look at each opportunity equally. We will look at you know whether it makes sense, whether we are able to sustain it, whether we are able to give the students the best uh, education possible. So if that is possible, if we can source faculty, then why not? You know, it's not something that we are not open to. So you are a successful leader. So what skills are necessary to be successful leader? I think the biggest biggest skill that any leader must have is that of empathy. 
and i think that is why we are seeing more and more women leaders become successful uh, you know and um, entrepreneurs who are who are really really uh, showing the way to others because i feel women generally are more empathetic uh you know i i know i shouldn't be making such statements very very uh, bad of me but men do can be empathetic but women i think it's it's kind of intrinsic in us um but any leader whether you're a man or a woman i feel being empathetic towards your employees towards uh, people you work with uh people uh, you deal with is extremely important uh, so once you start empathizing with them you are able to then lead them rather than you know um uh, lead them with respect yeah uh, so the mutual respect kind of gets developed you are able to empower them with more uh kind of authority which also helps people stay motivated in a, in an organization i feel like um if you are just going to be able to be, to be you know uh, shouting out commands and and telling people that you know you must listen to me because i say so that doesn't work right uh, you need to lead by example and you need to empower your people to feel to make them feel that this is theirs more than anybody else's and i think that was one of the first things that i decided um having worked in an organization before i knew and it was a startup as well i knew how i felt when i worked there you know i felt like it was my own place uh, even though i wasn't even i was just one of the most junior employees in the company um and i felt like when i when i started with spring was i i really wanted every employee uh, every faculty member to walk into the campus and feeling the sense of ownership that this is theirs not mine not megna's not savaj guys not you know um uh, the families or muktars this is mine and that personal ownership i feel really has people stay more motivated <clears throat> so the leader if you empathize with people and you're able to empower them in that way uh, you really can create a beautiful culture uh, you know of love respect and loyalty and uh, and i think that those are the things that you need for uh, really uh, building a building a place where uh, you can have good productivity as well and efficiency very nicely put meena thanks for talking with us thank you so much thank you thank you so much kanchan thank you for having me bye bye